Welcome back to Timberborn, everybody, and welcome back to the Iron Isles. We are in the middle of a drought. I'm pretty sure you can see that. And I think it might be the longest drought that we're going to have to face or that we have faced thus far. Now, I will say I don't remember exactly how long this drought was going to be, but I do remember looking up at the little timer in the top right and seeing nine days at one point there. So we are looking at at least nine days for this drought, but we should we should be OK. And there's a few reasons we should be okay. Obviously, the irrigation systems that we're using around the place are allowing us to keep, you know, producing food all through the years and all through the cycles. And then obviously we have a bunch of water in here as well and in here and also down at the lower end of District 3. So all things considered, even if this district was up and running, which it isn't, we would be doing just fine. And the little irrigation system that we have down here is allowing us to go ahead and start planting things like, well, potatoes right here in the middle and then a bunch of wheat around the outside. Because my plan for this district is relatively simple. I want it to be self-sufficient. I want it to be able to look after itself. So we're going to have the potatoes growing and being turned into grilled potatoes. I have a grill scheduled here and here. And then the wheat, I mean, it's going to need a grist mill. It's going to need a bakery. And honestly, what I'm thinking for that is something relatively simple. I think what we do is we go into paths and structures, we go to platforms, and we build a little 3x2 platform there, a 3x2 platform there, and we can do a little section in the middle as well, of course. And then all I need to do is go to food, go to grist mill, and it can go, I guess, right here. Although it is going to need power, and that's something we're going to have to figure out. Well, actually... Figuring that out might be relatively easy. If I do a grist mill here, oh, this might actually be slightly trickier than I thought, but regardless, what? Well, if I did a grist mill right up against this building, it would give us power that way. I'd have to bring the path out and around and adjust things a little bit, but that would absolutely work. And then I was thinking of just doing the bakery like here. But again, if I move the grist mill, that does slightly screw things up. And also the bakery doesn't actually need power, which is something I kind of forgot about. So, well, I guess the bakery could go there as well. What I was thinking of doing, long story short, was I was going to try and bring power across this little path. But as I mentioned, that's sort of easier said than done and also sort of not. I'm getting a little carried away with overcomplicating this. Uh, basically, what I think I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put a grist mill, I guess, here is is as good a spot as as any. And then what I can do is get rid of this section of path, get rid of this section of path and this one. And then all I need to do is bring a single little straight power shaft across here with some stairs there, there and a single platform. And that will give us a path connection around this place. And that'll also give us, I guess, you know, the, the power to the, the grist mill itself. And then what I can do for the bakery is, I suppose, I could just put it here if I extend the platforms back a little bit. Or not, because it turns out the stairs are in the way. So I could put it over here instead, which is honestly kind of a nice spot for it. So I think that's exactly what we'll go ahead and do. So we'll take out these four platforms. We'll go ahead and put a triple platform right here and a single platform right here. And then the bakery can just live right about there. And so we have the wheat getting produced. It'll be wheat flour. And then this guy is going to be making bread. And it's going to be that simple. These guys are going to be doing, I guess, grilled potatoes and grilled potatoes. And this is going to be a pretty good little district. It honestly is. And if we absolutely need to, we can obviously build another engine at some point. But it's a ways off considering we need gears and we're now presumably not producing gears oh my god this thing's fallen already wow okay this thing really didn't store much power at all man we we need to look into some more we need to look into more engines i think i i think we might need to break down our industry and have a look at what's actually going to be vitally important because i think at this stage gear production is hugely important just about everything we're trying to build requires a a good amount of gears and also a good amount of planks as well planks are quite low at the moment but i would imagine and we are sort of seeing quite a few trees around here 
So I, I do think gears are going to be really, really important. So we might want to look into an engine and we might want to look into, you know, hooking it up to all of this. Although at the same time, I mean, what does this, uh, what does the gear workshop require? It's taking 120 horsepower. You were taking 60, so 100 and 180, 240. I mean, an engine would probably power all of this on its own anyway. So maybe we just build an engine and sort of hook it up to all of this. That might not be a bad idea. It might be a relatively simple solution and then it can... I mean, these, these things power them amazingly, but an engine would power all of this sort of year round, assuming we have the logs, which we have 878, 774 of those are in District 1. So maybe we get an engine. Maybe that's how we do things. Now, I do have to keep in mind that these buildings here are not connected to these ones. So the engine's going to have to be somewhere that is connected to all of this. And I think in the simplest sense, what I could probably do is I could probably take out some of these sunflowers. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and mark these guys for demolition. And I think I can use paths. No, I can't use paths on top of these. So I'm going to have to just uh, prioritize this to remove those. I'm also going to mark, I guess, a little something something here. These guys for demolition and prioritize that as well. Because my thinking, at the very least, is that I might be able to get away with building either some levees or some platforms. And I'm kind of thinking levees because I believe the platforms, yeah, they need planks, which is a bit, it's, it's a bit much. Either way, something like this. And then on top of that, I can go and build an engine. And if I build the engine here, I can essentially bring some power lines around, hook it up to this building, and suddenly we have an engine providing power. But it looks like this thing actually needs a uh, door access which is a little bit annoying so i guess i guess we just i guess we just build it there right there's not really anything i could build under this i don't think there's any reason to not use levees so we'll do this and then this back section is going to be platforms going like this and in terms of power it's just a right angle power shaft into another right angle power shaft into some straight power shafts there and that should power everything so all I got to do is mark these resources for demolition. I want to prioritize marking those for demolition. And I'd also like to prioritize, I guess, not the uh, not the engine itself, but I want to prioritize all of sort of the power infrastructure. And then we'll get a little levy here. We'll get a path. We'll get some stairs and everything should be perfect. Now, in other news, District 1 has 13 unemployed beavers right now. So... I think it might be an idea to build another hauling post and possibly another builder's hut. So I think we'll go ahead and do that, to be honest. I, I think that's exactly what we'll do. I don't necessarily want to get rid of these blueberries, though. So I'm wondering where else I could build these things. And in a way, I'm tempted to build them over here. I don't know that we need dandelions all that much. So... Let's go and just mark a few more resources. We need a three by four space. Although if we do all of this, we can bring a path sort of around this and put the two buildings in the middle there. So what I'll do is go ahead and prioritize removing all of those. And we can go ahead and build another builder's hut and another hauling, whatever it's called, hauling builder's hut and hauling post down this way. And that should give us a little bit more efficiency in moving things around and hopefully building things as well. Having eight dedicated uh, dedicated builders for District 1, I imagine, is going to be very good for us. Now, looking at District 2, there's actually only one free bed, which is surprising. We're going to need to expand District 2 shortly, but there's also no one unemployed, which is lovely. And then checking District 3, let's just make sure no one's been assigned to it, which they absolutely haven't. There are two available jobs, which is perfectly fine. That's going to be the Lumberjacks right there. And they're going to be dealing with all these trees over this way. Uh, this Forester, on the other hand, <laughs> interestingly, is, uh, is still going to need to be connected to everything. I think it's going to take a little while for all of this to get built. And I kind of want all of this built before District 3 gets up and running so we might be waiting a little while but honestly that's kind of okay that's kind of the point 
is that District 3 is... It's, it's supposed to be efficient, right? It's going to be where we're testing out. We're testing out the gravity batteries, but we're also testing out the engine. And we're also going to be making books, which I can't remember what the books do. I'm going to be completely honest. I've already forgotten. It's been like a week since I played Timberborn, so forgive me. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what the benefit is of uh, of books, but that's that's fine. That's totally okay. Did we ever build the tappers shack? That's a very good question. We never built it because it needs gears, much like everything else. <laughs> much like everything else needs gears. All right, we need to prioritize that. That thing actually needs to be built because it just it just does. That thing needs to be built because we need to start getting the. This is, what is it? The the syrup, the pine resin, so we can start turning planks into strengthened planks, which also needs gears, needs <laughs> needs to, uh, 40 gears and 250 horsepower. Yeah, that's a lot. That's going to be a lot. But anyway, let's get ourselves a, I guess, a holding post right about here. Let's get ourselves a builder's hut right about here. And let's bring a path just around both of those. And we can also prioritize building these since... Oh, wow. We're actually down to nine planks right now. This this is actually kind of rough. This is genuinely a bit of a rough spot. I think we might even need to look into, and I guess we are looking into an, another lumber mill down here. And I suppose we do we have a lumber mill in District 2? We actually don't, which is also kind of surprising. District 2 has a hundred planks as well. I'll tell you, I, I wonder if we should ship those back. Because we're not, we're not making planks here, right? We're just, oh my god. This district's also probably full, yeah, 1,421 scrap metal. Good lord. Alright, yeah, we need to, uh, we really need to start switching out to these engines. I'm, I'm actually tempted to say that this engine might need to be a higher priority than the District 3 engine, just so we can keep this production going. But even then, I don't even know that a single gear workshop's gonna be enough. I mean, obviously, oh man, how, how do we want to look at this? Because if a single gear workshop isn't enough, oh, we're, oh, we're harvesting, uh, harvesting potatoes down here. If a single gear workshop isn't enough, that means, I mean, I guess, yeah, we just need more planks. And we have got a consistent number of logs, right? We always seem to have over 800 now, so maybe what we do is we turn off the delivery of planks to District 2 and we set these guys up to start producing their own i mean i feel like we certainly could we have enough power coming in here so it would be completely doable and honestly might be for the best let's let's have a little look here power or rather wood and we're looking for a lumber mill it could go right there which honestly wouldn't be a terrible spot for it if i could shuffle it sort of around a little bit i could bring power over in a bit of a better way and I think, honestly, that's what I'm going to do. I think we will get ourselves a, uh, a lumber mill in here. So we'll do this. We'll get ourselves a little path that goes this way. We'll get ourselves a lumber mill right here. And that's going to mean I need to do power. I need a high power shaft. I need another high power shaft right there. I'm going to need a platform. I'm going to need a straight power shaft. I'm going to need one there as well. This doesn't work. Oh. Oh, that is unfortunate. Okay. I didn't uh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So that's that's not going to work. I guess I could just put it next to this. Wow, they built those quickly. I guess I could just put it next to these guys. I don't think we need all of those berries. They built those exceptionally quickly. Good lord. I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll just build it in here. So once again, we're going to be marking resources for demolition. Once again, we're going to be setting those to a very high priority. And as soon as those are gone, we can go and say, build me a lumber mill. And then that'll be, a, you know, it'll be powered once power comes back. And these guys can start producing their own, uh, their own planks, which means District 1 isn't going to be shipping planks over here anymore. So let's go and say, I suppose, cancel the planks delivery. We could probably cancel the logs delivery as well. We'll keep the water delivery. I think that's going to be important, especially considering this is now dry. Although the drought's over in 0.3 days. And we'll keep the potatoes one as well, just to make sure that they're fed and watered. 
and I think everything else is fine. And this thing's actually built already, which is lovely. So that'll be an available job for one of the kids once they grow up. And we actually have a homeless beaver in this district as well. So let's get them a row house. In fact, maybe let's give them a larger row house. Might not be a bad idea. Might not be a great idea. I don't really know. Let's just do a couple of them. We'll do something like this just to make sure that the place is, you know, has room for, for population growth and, and all of that good stuff. Now, looking down here, this guy is, it's only going to produce 400 horsepower. Is that going to be enough? So 100 and what do you require? I actually don't know what this needs. Uh, 120, 120, 60, what's that? 240 again. So I think, it, I think it will actually, but that should be fine. Uh, these guys are up and working as well. So hopefully that's going to help with all of the production. And I guess now that the water's back, hopefully everything gets going again, right? So hopefully we're going to see all of this get moving. Hopefully we're going to see the food production pick up. Food actually didn't drop all that much. Water dropped by about 400. Uh, this is actually up and running, which is amazing. So that's great news. This forester is up and running, but it isn't connected to any paths, which is... Uh... Wait, it is connected to paths. What do you mean? Isn't connected to any district center. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait, no, it is. Oh, no, you guys aren't stuck there, are you? Oh, no, they can get through here. Okay, so the beavers are fine. I I kind of want them to prioritize this path over here. I'm not going to lie. I, I want this to be built so that beavers can go around that way safely and not ever get stuck. Because that would be kind of annoying. Oh, no, this is interesting. We're up to 20 unemployed beavers in district one with 12 kids so as as annoying as that is as much as i want them to be working and and being efficient i also don't necessarily mind that too much because the idea is that eventually a lot of those beavers can just be migrated to district three and that should give us a bit of a jump start on district three and should give us enough beavers to get everything working now, all of these buildings are already working. This one has a worker assigned. This one has a worker assigned. They just don't have power, which is kind of what's holding them back. These guys, these grills are both working as well. So the district is functional. I mean, the, the district, it's still district one, but it is just a case of kind of waiting at the moment. Uh, and it is going to be a bit of a pain to wait for all of this. It really is in fact i'm honestly tempted to turn district three into a bit of a gear production powerhouse because we are honestly that desperate we really are it's it's getting it's it's getting to be that bad i mean this district has a good amount of planks and it is producing its own planks now as well so i don't think it would hurt i mean a gear workshop is is a building we could you know fit right here or we could fit right next to the the existing planks one i just think it's necessary so let's let's do it let's get ourselves i guess another workshop and i think what i'll do for this is i think i will just put it next to the lumber mill so we'll go in and once again as we've done so many times today we'll go ahead and prioritize taking those resources out and we can just go and build ourselves a gear workshop once the resources are gone and that shouldn't take too long. We do have the materials to do that. And then all I'm going to need to do is set up a little delivery order to take gears to District 1. So add a new route. It's going to come all the way down to District 1 right about there. And it is going to be for gears. And then if we look at the limits on this, and I just remind myself once again, low resources below this limit are not carried out. High is above so low is local high is destination so if we are lower than say 20 gears maybe lower than 10 gears and anything above 250 don't carry into district one so essentially district two will maintain a stock of 10 gears and then it will stop shipping to district one once uh, district one has 250 gears so that should be good. That should work out kind of nicely. This thing is ready to build as well, which is fantastic. I think we're generating enough power. Network uh, power output. Let's see. Network power supply demand. One, one, essentially 1,200. Current demand is 60. 
So we're doing all right. <laughs> we're, we're doing okay. Let's see what the demand goes up to. I don't imagine it's going to hit 1,200. I think we'll be okay there. And actually looking at it, we might need to migrate some population to, uh, to District 2. So switch you to District 1, switch you to District 2. Let me just send over like, I don't know, three beavers. And that should give us someone working here, which it has. And so we should now be producing gears in District 2, which should be very good for us. This space down here, it's still being built. It's going to take forever, but that's okay. Oh, now this is exciting. The District 3 engine has been built. It's getting deliveries of logs, which means the gear workshop and the sawmill or whatever it's called in District 3. I keep saying District 3. You know what I mean. It's it's working. So gear production is up even further. Planks production is up even further as well. And so hopefully we're going to see the other engine get up a bit sooner than later. Now, I will say I have just realized something about this space down here, and that is that we're going to need a distribution post. So I want to build it here is what I'm thinking. And uh, very simply, I just need a bunch of, I guess, I guess we could do levies. I guess levies wouldn't really hurt if we just sort of do it this way. And I need to just pay attention to how this is actually going to fit. Uh, so I need, let's see, two more levies, I think, right here and here. And then I should be able to place this thing right about there once the trees are gone. Now, the way I'm going to do this is plain and simple. Once again, mark resources for demolition. Once again, we're going to just go ahead and prioritize that. And I'm just going to bring a path sort of this way. And I'm going to do some stairs here, some stairs here. And that's going to give us a little shot around to distribution post and also through the fields. And that should keep us pretty good. Now, that does mean that I'm going to have to go and get rid of all these resources as well. We're getting rid of a lot of resources today, and I don't know how I feel about it, but it's what we're doing. We're, we're you know, industry, we have to pave the way for this, uh, for all of this industry. And it might be a terrible idea. It, it really might be a terrible idea, but we're, we're going to, you know, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to see what happens. It is sad that the, uh, what is it? The, the iron teeth. Isn't that the faction we're playing? The Iron Teeth do not necessarily respect uh, nature and, and all of that. They are very much happy to get rid of everything in favor of, of industry and power and, and metal. So that's what we're doing. Speaking of metal, one more metal block and this is all going to be powered, which is amazing news because obviously that means that we have this thing powered throughout the year. It means that flower production isn't going to slow down. It means that gear production isn't going to slow down. And uh, I'm thinking that we we could try and move a sawmill over here. Because right now, the only sawmill that I remember... I'm sure I've got another one in here somewhere. I might only have one sawmill in District 1, which would explain a lot. Uh, it's powered by this. This guy right here. We just have a beaver just running on this wheel powering the sawmill, so... Oh, no, we do have a second one in here. Long story short, we could probably attach maybe both of those sawmills to this little grid right here. Honestly, might not be a terrible idea to, uh, to get that going. Because, honestly, I don't remember what we're doing with the sunflower seeds. We have a bunch of them. That's actually dandelions right there. <laughs> we have... I thought we had sunflower seeds. I guess maybe we don't. We have a lot of wheat. As well. Good lord, we have a lot of wheat. That's only in District 1 as well, I think. Is that in District 1? That's a, yeah, it is. That's a lot of wheat in District 1. Good Lord. Okay, that's slightly scary. What's also slightly scary is that we're actually going to be starting to work on paper. Okay. We're starting to get into some of the new stuff here. Oh, wow. And just like that, we've got a printing press as well. That took, that took no time at all. I think this gear production might be going really, really well for us, which is kind of wild. I'm not going to lie. That's actually, that's actually kind of great. I mean, it's, you know, we need 40 gears per gravity battery. We need 10 metal blocks, 40 planks. We need a lot of stuff for these gravity batteries. But regardless, I mean, production's probably going to be pretty good. Now, I will say, 
something I should be paying attention to and that you might have caught, you might have spotted before I've spotted it, is the fact that our water has dropped by about 600 units since the end, or not since the end of the drought, since the start of the episode. It's dropped by about 200 since the end of the drought. So what that tells me is that we are not gathering enough water anymore, which is slightly scary. Not gonna lie, I don't, I don't love that fact, but we can probably deal with that. In fact, I'm quite confident in saying we can deal with that, because what I'm gonna do is build a bunch more water pumps. I'm gonna get one, say, here. I think I can put one there. I think that's in the water. That is in the water, right? Yeah, we can do there, we can do there. And if we wanted to, we could do here as well. No, that would block that door. We can do two of them. We could arguably do three of them. Again, if we really wanted to, that is slightly a weird spot for it. Uh, could I get another one in there? I could, if I did some platforms and some levees and things like that. I, I think I'm just going to do down there, though. I think that might be a little bit easier. Although I would still like to do the levees, just so they're sort of in line. So we'll do some levees like like this. I know I can build them, so we'll just do uh, we'll just do a little bit, a little something, something like that. And let me just check what else we've got here. Deep mechanical water pump, 700 horsepower. Pumps water up on one side and discharges it on the other. More efficient than a regular pump. So, well, how much is it? 5,000. So, pumps up on one side and dumps on the other. That's, I guess that's a means to make like a, like a reservoir. Which is something I'd be interested in doing. I guess if I was to do that here... We could pump water up on this side and dump it in here and to help fill all of this. Which would be kind of cool and probably worth uh, probably worth doing. But for now, let's just get this all sort of connected together as best we can. And let's hope that... Ooh, that one's out of range. Well, that one's maybe out of... Let's, let's just get... Let's just do the two. Let's do the two for the time being. We'll just get rid of all these levies because it's a little bit unnecessary. And we'll go and just say, delete this delete this and these two should be good but they do need to be prioritized i'm also not 100 percent sure that these two are going to be enough to help with the water situation but hopefully they will be and of course they're going to be pulling water from a space that will have water throughout a drought not for an entire drought but at least for a chunk of a uh, of a drought we can be confident that there will be water in there so that's going to help us out it'll help fill these two tanks and that'll hopefully take some of the stress off of all the rest of the tanks that we have around the place. Now, just checking in on the District 1 engine, network supply is 742 horsepower, demand is 240. So we could absolutely, if we really wanted to, go ahead and hook up those two sawmills to this system and we would be pretty good. In fact, we could probably get another, we absolutely could get another gear workshop over here, but I just... At this point, I don't know that we need another gear workshop. We have... Oh, we've even got... Uh, we've got a book right there. That's great. That's... This is really cool. <laughs> I've got to be honest. Uh, although the demand on this network right now is... Exactly 400. Which is a little bit concerning. But that's also kind of cool that this one engine is able to power all of these guys. And then... Oh, this is going to be too much though. Wow, we might actually need another engine. I don't want to build another engine over here. I think that might be a bit too much. But, uh, yeah, kind of wild that we might might want to do that. Definitely uh, a little bit wild. Let's just check in over this way. Did these guys get built? They absolutely did. So that is beautiful news. I do think I want to prioritize these workplaces, though, just to make sure we always have beavers there. And that should hopefully lead to... Like I said, these water tanks here are getting filled up. And if it doesn't, we have a pretty big problem. Although with that said, we have 17... Oh my god, we've got 17 baby beavers. I've just realized. 15 of them in this district. Nine of the unemployed beavers in this district as well. Maybe we turn off some breeding pods. Although if I do that, I feel like I'm going to run into the, you know, the, the age-old problem of not enough beavers to maintain work. Wait, what are you complaining about? Oh, you're injured. Interesting. We do have medical beds in this district, right? I don't I don't think we do. I think I got rid of the medical beds. Let me bring the lev. That's not the what's this? That's the hour? Wait, can I change the time of day? 
I don't know what the, oh, uh, that's when they go to sleep. Oh yeah, working hours, I can extend them or reduce them. I'm not gonna extend working hours, that seems insane. Uh, I don't think I do have medical beds, do I? I have these grindstones down here, but I don't think I ever replace the medical beds. So let's put a medical bed there, and a medical bed there, and that'll keep them pretty good once those are built. And I guess we should also look into a healer, right? Makes medicine and distribute, uh, distributes it to medical beds. It uses dandelions to make medicine. That seems like a good idea. 300 science points. It's a little much to build it, but not necessarily the end of the world. And I guess it can go... It's only a little 2x2 two two building as well. It can kind of go anywhere if I really wanted it to. I just don't know that I have any good space for it. Oh, right about here. Seems kind of perfect. That's that's a that's a really packed spot, but sure. I'm kind of okay with that. And I guess it's going to need more gears. Of course it will. So we'll just let that build. It'll get built whenever it gets built. Honestly, I'm actually really pleased that this is all running. Just anything in general. I'm, I'm pleased that anything is uh, is up and running at this point. I wasn't really expecting any of this to be uh, to be going, but absolutely here we are and and it is gear production is up plank production is up i think food production is still pretty solid Three thousand grilled potatoes is uh well i'd say it's nothing to sniff at but that smell would probably be quite overwhelming so it's quite literally something to sniff at and so i suppose we can leave it there for today we've got smoke stacks upon smoke stacks upon smoke stacks rising across our colony of of beavers this is going surprisingly well i wasn't expecting it to i was thinking this was all going to fall apart at some point and that's because my first playthrough of timberborn when i came back to it for this series absolutely did fall apart there was a version i played on a live stream where everyone died and then at one stage i recorded like two or three episodes of this series for youtube it wasn't a stream thing i got three episodes in and all of my beavers died and that's always fun. That's like my biggest fear as a YouTuber is getting like three episodes into like this or Stonehearth or Rimworld or any colony, colony management game and everyone dies because you get really invested in a series. I get really invested in it. I'm like, this is going to be great. I'm having so much fun. And then three hours in, I have to delete everything because it failed miserably and that makes for terrible television. But fortunately, that hasn't been the case with the Iron Isles, at least thus far and i feel like if they did all die i'd be quite sad about it i'd probably restart and try and salvage the save but i feel like i've made more progress thus far than i have in any previous series of this game so i don't know if that's true it feels like it was a long time ago but i feel like we're not too far away from golems i say that i need more science there's a lot of things i need more of but i feel like we're not that far away so hopefully that's something we can aspire for or aspire towards Hopefully in the next episode, we can get District 3 actually up and running. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But for now, thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.